I recently had a heart and liver transplant. I now show people my old heart and they say it looks like cookie dough. By sharing my complete story, the good, the bad, the raw, that it will spread the awareness out on heart disease. There's been quite a few negative comments. Ooh, yuck, that's disgusting. What type of person would keep their organs and stuff? But they say that without understanding the work that I'm actually trying to do. So I'm gonna show you my heart. I was born with six different heart defects, which basically means I was born with half a heart and multiple holes in my heart and leaky valves. Throughout my life, I have had a total of five open heart surgeries, two pacemaker surgeries, one emergency lung surgery, and a combined double heart and liver transplant with over 200 minor surgeries. When I was 18, I endured multiple surgeries all at once, which resulted in me going into heart failure at age 19. When I was 22, I was diagnosed with liver disease. A lot of people think that I just got bad luck and develop liver disease on its own, but liver disease was actually um, caused by my heart disease over time, so it is a secondary effect um, due to my heart disease. When I was 22, I got the flu, and that actually deteriorated my heart. They were going to go down the transplant route. It's the only thing that could have saved my life. So although the heart and liver has never been performed in New Zealand on someone born with heart disease, they decided to take the risk because the liver can deteriorate quite, quite fast. In my case, I was waiting for both organs, heart and liver, which had to come from the same donor, which is why I waited um, about two to three times longer than a normal person. I received my call at 6.30 in the morning. I just knew my gut feeling that call was the call and I was super excited. This was my only chance of survival. I knew that a transplant is a pretty big surgery considering I was having both organs done. At one point there is just a machine in the middle of my chest, you know, keeping all the rest of my vital organs pumping while they take out my heart and they insert my donor's heart. Um, they replaced my heart first before they got to my liver. I can finally talk and I ate for the first time today. I was in hospital for a total of 53 days in ICU, 14 days in ward, and I was in cardiac rehabilitation centre for 21 days. Good girl. Although I had like a transplant, I do honestly live a normal life of being able to breathe, do everything that a normal person could do. So now I just have no limitations and I'm able to study and continue on with my career and my future. My heart scar goes from the top of my chest down here. Due to all the surgeries that I have had, um, I actually have a whole chest and stomach full of scars, which I absolutely adore and love. I show them to everyone. This scar here is from my liver transplant. Here in New Zealand, due to religious and cultural beliefs, we actually get the option, unlike any other country, to keep our organs so we can bury it with us when we pass away. What I was initially going to do was to bury it um, on behalf of my donor. However, I recently found out that I can use it to educate people, um, educate them on the importance of organ donation and spread the awareness of heart disease. So I'm gonna show you my heart. I store it up here in my wardrobe. And this is it. So one of the most main questions I get asked is why is it so large or if a human heart is this size. Now your heart is the size of your fist, um, but your heart is actually a muscle. So when it is damaged or overworked, it increases in size and it swells. Um, also, in my opinion, I think it looks like cookie dough. Most people are surprised that I actually keep it in my wardrobe because everyone assumes that organs or body parts actually belong in the freezer, but in my case, it doesn't. Growing up with heart disease, I thought it was super important to educate people on a disease known as the invisible disease. I was hoping by sharing my complete story, the good, the bad, the raw, that it will spread the awareness out on heart disease and actually how serious it is and how much it can impact someone's life. My heart is one of the biggest things to show because of how large it is. It obviously shows how damaged the heart was and just what heart can, disease can do to somebody. There's been quite a few negative comments. They'll comment or tag their friends and be like, ooh, yuck, that's disgusting. What type of person would keep their organs and stuff? 
but they say that without looking at my other videos without actually knowing what I have gone through and the reason behind why I am showing my heart and without understanding the work that I'm actually trying to do. And the positive things that's really nice to see, it really warms my heart uh, with all these parents who have children with heart disease and that my story gives them somewhat sort of hope. And it's one of the main reasons why I do it. I am just preparing some snacks for when Shard comes over and then we're gonna sit down and look through old photos and video of my journey. Shard supports me in a really big way because when I'm sick with the flu and all that stuff, he'll make sure that he is there catering to, you know, all the little things, big things I need. It's a sensitive topic for him, but because it's such a large part of my life, I think it's super important for him to see what I have gone through. How do you feel like when I show you these type of photos? Obviously stuff that you were never able to see. It's like unexplainable. Like pretty like abnormal but it's also like a, always a reminder just to be like you gotta be careful gotta be careful yeah life can change in any second right and that's the thing though like you have to be healthy now like i try anything, anywhere, <laughs> anything we do there's something back and it's just like that can change you always have to be like ready to go well it's important for me to actually share these photos with you because it lets you know and it tells you a bit obviously about my journey and the importance of heart disease and how it actually affected my life before I met you. I'm sure that it's possible to actually right. survive, eh? Survive things like this. I'm proud of you boys. Look how far you've come. And still, still going. For anyone going through transplant, the way that I got through it was a positive mindset. I know it's a super daunting and scary time, but find every little bit of positivity you can because going into it with a positive mindset will end up bringing a positive outcome. That's something that I've kind of like lived by. We have two trans kids. Anyone can be whoever they want. I'm just owning it. Our family is seen to be very unconventional. So I had kids and I can't be hot anymore. Like, moms are hot too. People say I look like a thug, but I love thugs. I take that as a compliment. I'm bored of people thinking that I cannot be intimate. I'm a young, single, hot piece of disabled booty. I feel like I'm going to look at myself and be like, who is that? Life is way too short to be hiding. It is my story, it is my truth.